Hey there, I'm Sam, otherwise known as D-Pad Gamer, and this is a book review that nobody asked for, for Alice Isn't Dead by Joseph Fink. Um, you will probably hear some weird noises in the background as my cat runs around, and as I uh, flip back and forth because I did make some notes, and this video might be long. So, first off, um, I am aware, I looked around online, and a lot of people really enjoy this book, and I don't understand why. Um, but this review, anything I say, I'm not trying to spread any hate. I'm not trying to demean anybody that likes this story. I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody. Uh, no offense to anybody that likes the story, that disagrees. Obviously, no offense to the uh, author, but um, my god. Um, I do believe Joseph Fink made a very, very bad story. And I don't understand why people like it. Um, so, the story, in essence, is a road trip. It's a collection of, of short... Um, from what I understand, it's based on the podcast in which it's a collection of these broadcasts that the main character, Keisha, makes. My cat's meowing at me. And um, she's out on the road as a truck driver trying to find her missing wife, Alice. The problem is that um that's resolved within the first 80 pages of this 300 page book and it's resolved very poorly as is every arc in this story every arc it'll go on for 10 20 30 50 100 pages or so and every single time no matter what without fail it will be resolved within one page of very bad dialogue because unfortunately all the dialogue in this in this book is uh, very poorly done so let's 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 start stop with the generalizations. Let's get specific. So first off, I think the pacing is very bad. Um, it's it markets itself in the inside cover as this isn't a story. It's a road trip, which is the dumbest thing I've ever read in context. Um, so many reviews I've seen say how this is such a, a gripping gothic horror, um, unsettling road trip when it's not unsettling. It's not a good road trip story. Like, they jump around, or the author has the main character jump around so often, with almost no rhyme or reason. Um, obviously, she's a truck driver, so she goes different places. But the problem is, almost no impact, or there's almost no impact to any of it, because she'll move from one city to the next, and all you'll get in between is a single sentence saying, Oh, she drove along. Um, I, w I will try to give some good examples so because I have the book in front of me and I I've been obsessing over this book not because it's good but because I think it's really really bad and I'm I am just I'm just going crazy the fact that like anybody thinks this is good um okay so this I mean spoilers this all spoilers okay so um this part is near the end of part one I do believe um, we've just, out of seemingly nowhere, Alice just shows up, and within one page of very shallow dialogue, uh, Keisha refuses and just sort of pushes away her, her wife Alice to, um, wait, no, actually, I am, wait, am I? Am I getting that right? Actually, no, I think I'm, I'm sorry. I'm combining two different sections. Sorry. So this so this section is specifically about she finds this other town full of these monsters called the Thistlemen, which are one of the main antagonists of the story, which are quite possibly the worst monster I've ever heard of because they're so poorly thought out. Um, at the very end of the chapter, uh, and this is a single paragraph, um, she got back in her car, left behind the secret town of serial killers on a U.S. airbase, they use that phrase like four or five times because they can't think of anything better than a, uh, a town of serial killers on a U.S. airbase. Drove to her truck in a lot outside of Victorville, then straight through the night to a house that had stood empty since she'd left it. And she stepped through the door into the stale air that smelled like a different part of her life. And she was home for the first time in over a year. Firstly, um, that's all a run-on sentence. Um, in fact, that entire paragraph is a single sentence, which is very bad. Uh, but also, um, this small part, it sounded weird to say because it's all really stilted writing. Um, again, no offense if you like this, I'm sorry, but like, I, I just don't get it. How can anybody like this story? 
every single time there is like some sort of travel, it's described in these very poorly done, shallow sentences. Often, I mean, a lot of run-on sentences. Um, it's just, I don't, how is this a good, tra like, road trip? A road trip is supposed to have substance. It's supposed to be about the travel. It's supposed to be about the journey, not the destination. But this is all about the destination. It's never about the journey. Ever. Literally ever. <laughs> um, but there's so much more than that. So I have I have four, four pages here. We're going to be here a while. Um, <laughs> um, firstly, I think the writing is really, really amateur. For some reason, everyone... I've seen, and, and like, there's been some negative reviews, but like, it has like a 3.5 out of, like, out of 5. Um, on Goodreads, all I could find is positive stuff. I understand why people like it, but I don't think it's a good reason, and I'll get into that. Um, but firstly, I think the writing's amateur. As an example, yes, you could call this cherry picking, but this, I just think it really stands out. When Alice shows up out of nowhere, and is talking about the Thistle Men, these monsters, we get this perfect uh, example of this garbage writing. They'll kill you, Alice said. Maybe, uh, it says Kesha. Kesha, or Kesha, Kesha, whatever. Kesha, they will kill you to an extent you didn't know a person could be killed. And then she essentially says, yeah, I know, I know, I know. She repeats it three times. Okay, you know. That's, <laughs> that's not, like, what is that? <laughs> like, I would get it if, if, if the main character was like a 14 year old. Um, but even then, like so much of this, so much of the writing feels fake. Like I, I, I see a lot of reviews about how the, the characters are very real and technically they are characters and they have names and genders and they have s aspects of personalities. But the problem is, um, this is a huge one. Um, they're just, trying to beat into your head the fact that uh, Keisha is, uh, she has anxiety. But the problem is, um, it's, it's all about show, don't tell. There are some, some, very few, but there are some good examples of showing how Keisha has anxiety. For example, she walks into a library, starts to speak to the librarian, and immediately feels a, a, a tightness in her chest as she, like, has this feeling of impending doom. She looks around for the exits because she can't not do it. Um, and she's very nervous out of nowhere for no reason. And it's like, oh, okay, I've, I've, I've been there. I, I, I understand. Um, apparently, Joseph Fink has anxiety, and I believe it. I'm not trying to gatekeep that. But the problem is, um, sure, he has this experience, and he tries to imbue this experience into the book, but he's really bad at it. And I think it's a really poorly done book. Again, no offense, I'm sorry, but like, I, 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 I'm going a little crazy. Obviously, I don't do reviews that often, so this review is probably very bad. Um, I'm not an author, so I'm not pretending to be, uh, better than, uh, this, the source material that I'm talking about, but still. Um, every time there is a encounter with one of these monsters, which, by the way, when it's one monster at the very beginning, for the first, um, say, 50 or so pages, uh, it's a great monster. I think it's actually legitimately interesting. I will say, whenever the monster talks, at least in book format, it's very cringy. I rarely use that word, but a lot of this book can be described as cringy. Um, and essentially, every single encounter with a monster is, Oh, I'm a monster and I could kill you. You can't kill me because I'm afraid, and because I'm afraid, I'm always afraid, so you can't scare me. Also, I have an anxiety. And they're like, ah, well, I'm a monster, see ya. And it's like, are you, are you serious? Like, no one, no one talks like that. I mean, if there are people that actually talk like that, I have never met them. And, um, it's very bizarre. Um, but every encounter with these monsters is so lacking in any level of suspense. Um, people in reviews I've seen are always going on about how it's very gripping and suspenseful. But the problem is when you actually read it as a book, as a story, as it is, every single time there is a death, uh, with very few exceptions, like near the end, every every time there's a death within the first two thirds of the book, that character that died was created one page earlier, give or take. Um, like she goes home at one point and 
her neighbors die, but the neighbors we had just got introduced to in that chapter. So literally nothing was lost. I mean like sure, oh a person died in this book, but the problem is if, if you create these characters with the sole purpose of dying, then there's no real substance. The, the main character, the only actual obstacles that Keisha runs into is her own anxiety, which isn't actually... Oh my god, my cat's going crazy. Stop it. Um, the, the only real obstacles is her own anxiety, which is very poorly done. And um, anxiety is used as a buzzword more than anything. Um... Again, not gatekeeping, this is just how I'm seeing it. Um, I'm not saying that he doesn't understand what anxiety is, but rather this representation of it is so poorly done. Um, at one point she gets scratched uh, because she pulls herself up through a... Uh, <laughs> she pulls herself up through a um, skylight, which has like glass on it, so she like cuts up her stomach. Um, and then later on reopens those wounds. And those are more or less the only wounds she takes the entire time. It's the only, like, amount of actual challenge or difficulty or, like, otherwise, it's like, it's like a walking simulator video game where you just walk around and you're like, oh, I see stuff. That looks sort of scary. And that's it. Like, that's the extent of it. Um, every time she actually runs up, like, it's hard. Okay. I, before I can move on, I need to say that this book is very, very heavy handed. Essentially hands made out of concrete with the fact that the monsters are a representation of racism, racists, also, I guess, sort of sexist slash, like, sexual assault, uh, per perpetrators, like, that sort of amalgamation of bad. Uh, and the book is very important saying bad is bad, and that is true. Bad is bad, racism is bad, I don't think I need to say that, but, like, some people will probably call me out as being something for making this review, but, so I have to be clear, bad is bad. I think we know that. But the problem is, um, every time she runs into this, um, it's essentially a representation for the struggles uh, this kind of character would see in everyday life. Because this character is a person of color, and this character is um, uh, queer, uh, which I have no problem with at all. And I think the relationship between Alice and Keisha is done decently well. Uh, but the problem is, every time we have this metaphor happening with the, the main character and then the monsters, she is always saved by someone else. Uh, which usually wouldn't be an issue, but the problem is it acts as if, as if she is so empowering and she's so independent, but that's not the case at all. And it and literally, um, so the first time she, so she, she runs into the thistle man before it's the thistle men, uh, quite a few times. Uh, the first time it's actually, she's, it's life or death that she's about to die, um, is when she rams her truck into the other town, which is a garbage name. You could have come up with something much better. And it's a dumb concept too, but that's besides the point. Um, and essentially is then confronted by the Thistle Man and then beats him to death, uh, because she is so scared. And that's how they describe it. And it's really bad. Um, but the problem is then she's saved by Lucy, the commander of, also the name of my cat, but the commander of Bay and Creek, this underground organization, which spoilers is connected to this whole thing. And it's really, really dumb. But the point is, um, she's saved by Lucy. That's, that's the first part. Then the next time it's in a library where she's saved by Alice. And then the last one, um, she is essentially, I mean, I guess she wins on her own when she's fighting Lucy. But when you look back, it's like, there was no, I feel like there's no actual empowerment. Like being empowered to be fighting off, like, you know, like ha actually having your own strength. And like, I, I could feel it. I could see it. I see the examples where the author is trying to make this character very empowering. And for some reason, every reviewer I've seen seems to like lap it up. But the problem is, um... If you want this book to be some sort of success or triumph, it's not. Like, it's it's so poorly done. You can, like, I feel like people are just settling for bad because they don't have anything better, which is very sad. Um, obviously, I don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm articulating this very well without, pro like, actually reading the whole book and just picking it apart piece by piece. Um, if this was a book club, it would be much easier to do. But anyways, the point is, um, 
Um, <laughs> so, uh, I'm trying to see if I have any more good examples. Um, oh, okay. So, so go back, backing up a bit about the Thistlemen, which are the main antagonists of the story. They are these monsters with very gross, grotesque faces. Their skin hangs down. And it's, they lumber around and, and their tongue is always lolling back and forth, which I guess in audio format probably makes a really weird noise and makes it sound creepy. But in book format, it's literally written out as like, la, 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 la. and it's like, are you serious? I'm supposed to take this as an actual threat? Like, for some reason, they do this, but they also talk. Like, they talk a lot, like way too much. Um, these, these monsters are constantly talking, actually, uh, which makes no sense. Um, the talking essentially, I like it's. I know why they do it, but the point is, it's it humanizes the monsters, which can be fine. Humanizing a monster is a great way to make a monster even more unsettling, because the closer a monster is to to the human sort of essence, the more unsettling it is, because it can be. It's more closer to home, I guess, in that way. But the problem is. In the context of the story, every time they talk, it's pointless, it's dumb, and it's essentially these obscenely strong enemies going on about how they could totally kill Keisha if they wanted, but they never once try. Um, but meanwhile, she's always walking away from these uh, these interactions going, oh, I was so afraid, but I was so strong because I persevered. So you just, you just walked away or sort of ran to your, the cab of your truck and drove away. It's like, that wasn't actual, there was no actual like conflict there. Um, and then she goes on and on about how she's fighting this war against the Thistle Men and only she can fight back. And then later on is, uh, is um, rebelling against the idea that Alice is protecting her because she can protect herself. But again, we go back to the point where every time there's a serious conversation, she's always saved by someone else, be it an Oracle, uh, another type of character I haven't brought up yet. Uh, Lucy, Alice, uh, I think even Sylvia, but, um, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't, um, I think I'm going to end it here. I, I don't see how anybody can enjoy this except, and this is where it's like, I have to be very careful with what I say because I, again, bad is bad and I agree with that. But the problem is, um, from what I understand, a lot of people see this book as a success, a triumph for, uh, like people of color. Or, or, or people in the LGBTQ uh, community, all that, which, sure, I get it. I get what they're going for. But the problem is, if this is your success story, if this is your triumph, if this is your shining book, you could do a lot better. And um, you shouldn't settle for something this garbage. Um, I truly believe that. Um, again, no offense to anybody that likes this. Um, I think it's important that... Uh, I think I think representation in books is important. Representation in media is very important. Um, but what you're left with here is when you really read it, when it's not an audio format, where it doesn't have the the benefits of going on for 30 plus hours, where it doesn't have the benefit of um, having you listen to it over three seasons, over, over many years, when it doesn't have the benefit of audio, when it doesn't have the benefit of voice actors, when it doesn't have the benefit of spooky, scary sounds... At the very core, this story is bad. It's poorly done, and I don't understand why anybody would enjoy it uh, as a story. Um, and I think I'll leave it there. Uh, I'm sorry if anybody is upset at this video. I don't even know if anybody's going to watch this video. But I just had to get my thoughts out there. Um, I don't think I'll watch or read anything more by Joseph Fink, even though I know he is the co-author of Welcome to Nightville. I do. I, I haven't actually listened to this podcast. I haven't listened to Welcome to Nightville. I just treated this book by itself, but obviously I couldn't not bring up the podcast based on the reviews. Um, I even have a, it's a signed first edition of Alice Isn't Dead, which I found at half price books for like 30% off. Um, it wasn't even half priced. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I briefly thought about burning it because I was like, I, I have less than zero urge to keep this book, but I think I'm just going to toss it up on my bookshelf and never look at it again. Um, this book doesn't deserve as much effort or as much thought as I've put into it. Um, I truly believe that this book 
is a waste of time. I'm sorry <laughs> if by some chance that the author watched this. Uh, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but uh, yikes. It's going to be yikes for me, dog. Um, I gave it a 2 out of 10 on Twitter, and I think I'm sticking with that. 2 out of 10, not great. There was, I will say, positives. One positive. One positive. And I'm going to find it, because I do think that if nothing else, I should... I should, uh... Give it this. Um, there was one single line in the entire book, which I thought was clever, which is sad, but that's just how it is. Um, so I'm flipping through the pages. I want to make sure I read it out word for word because it's the only time I thought, wow, this is actually clever. Um, did you do, so this is in the last section of the book after Alice and Keisha have rejoined forces and they are working together. My God, these chapters are like two pages long. I don't know why they're so short. I, th I assume it's because of the uh, conversion from podcast form. But uh, now at this point, I'm just trying to... Okay, here we go. This is the only line I thought that I stopped and went, ah, oh, that was actually sort of clever. Um, on chapter 47, first line, a stakeout is an exciting way of just... Uh, sorry. A stakeout is an exciting way to describe falling asleep in a parked vehicle. I thought that was clever. That was literally the only time I went, <laughs> oh, that's, that, was really, that was really well done. Um, and that's it. I'm sorry. Um, I've been outroing this for like the last five minutes. I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. Sorry. Um, I'm going to be reading a lot more books in 2019. I'll be trying to review every single one of them, even if I'm a garbage reviewer and no one asked for it. Um, but I don't want to do it because I just want to practice making reviews. I want to practice, uh, off the cuff commentary. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Sorry if, uh, if this review wasn't fun to listen to. And that's it. See ya.